Well, hi there, and welcome to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And we love to improve your home and improve your life. Every day we do. Night and day. Night and day. Day and night. That's right. And all I have to say is that it's the staple gun that's going to be our friend right now, because uh, when it comes to changing the look of an upholstered chair, it's amazing how... What is that? You're like a gunfighter. <laughs> it really can uh, take your chair from... to like, wow... Yeah. We're all about sound what, effects. What are you, starting. I know, what are you like a, a Disney character sound I'm a little foley artist right That's now. Fantastic. I'm a little foley artist. Machine gun. Dun, dun, dun. Do a machine gun. That's pretty good. I don't know. But anyway, so let's talk about upholstering chairs. Have you ever had an experience where somebody at the dining room table, let's say, it's holidays and someone has spilled some cab wine on your cream colored fabric? Dining room chair. Yeah, you're, you're, you've got a camera set up in my house during the dinner hour. I yeah. mean, every night at dinner, something spills. You know that. Yeah, I've yeah. got three kids under 14. They can't keep things in glasses. It's not part of their deal. So what have you done? Have you taken well, it to a professional to re- reupholster it? You've done it yourself? I've done, here, I've done you've it both ways. thrown them out? I've, do, I've done three things. You're mm-hmm. right. I've, mm-hmm. I've thrown them out. Uh-huh. I've taken to a upholster to do the whole professional deal, which is amazing when they do it. With oh, the, it's beautiful. Oh, gorgeous. And then I've done it myself, and I've, I've actually made a couple of different items with the staple gun and upholstering materials to exactly what we're talking I mean, about. I think that, and I, I've done all the above, too. I think that um, the professional route is great because yeah. you go, you know what? It's one thing off my to-do list. It's going to be done. It's going to be gorgeous. They know how to get the details right. But it can be like about 100 200 bucks a chair. Yeah. Right? If it's an antique, even more. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, but then there's also the idea of doing it yourself where you think, oh my gosh, I can't do it right. I'm a failure. I've never done it before. But the truth is, we're going to show you, you can do this with no training whatsoever. It's not that hard once you it's get the hang hard. of it. I mean, the, you know, the most difficult, challenging part is just getting the fabric even as you stretch it and staple it. And not being afraid of the staple gun, because no. even though you do miss staple, you can take it out and do it over. Pull it out and start over. So, yeah. And you're, you're doing it on the underside, so you won't see it anyway. So we'll get into it. So, the, I mean, the thing it. is, if you do your own, if you do do that voodoo of your so chair, well, yeah. you know, it's going to cost you maybe, what, about 10 bucks a chair, depending on the, co- the cost of your fabric? Yeah, obviously, it, it, it depends on the grade mm-hmm. and the quality of and content of your fabric, how much you need and all that stuff. But, yeah, about 10 to 15, I would say. Have you ever had the incident where, you know, you've already started the project and you've gotten so excited, you've purchased the fabric and you started to cut away the existing you know, stained or torn fabric on that antique chair, or whatever. Yeah. And then you didn't save it, and so now you don't really have a template for the new one. Has See that, that happened? Pretty much every time I tried it, and then I got I got hip to that idea, and and that's a great point you bring up. So you take off the existing cushion fabric or whatever you're redoing, and you use it as a template. Lay it out, even if it's stitched in specific ways. You may want to unstitch the corners so that you know you know you can create the exact folds, almost like origami, right? You lay that out, put your new fabric over it, flip it over, and then use a Sharpie. I sometimes will use a Sharpie and trace out that pattern, and then you can cut exactly what you had, and you know exactly how to do it when it's time to put it back on. And I've even taken it to the step of, uh, I'm going to do, I've done this when I've I've made um, outfits when you sew clothes and things like that, where you use a Sharpie pen and and label like this is upside, downside, or whatever on the back of yeah. the one that you've just cut off. Right. Like the one you're not going to use. Now this is your template. Would you in ever my, mark in on In my it? case, I do an arrow here that says, this is where expandable elastic will be put in pant area right. for Eric's <laughs> no, belly. I'm talking about the chair. Oh, now, but <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but seriously, have you done that? Because it helps to, I think, not only save the uh, the old chair fabric and, and uh, batting for now your little frame template, but then to mark it up. So now, because yeah. like anything, you forget get where all the pieces go. Yeah, or all... and, and if you don't do that, you can also take a picture of it with your smartphone. Oh, that's a good idea. You know? So just have some ideas. I always idea. do that when I change out wiring, for mm-hmm, example. Mm-hmm. I'll shoot it with the, the iPhone. The before and the after. The before and the after. Very right. smart yeah. idea. I do that in the parking lots now to remember where I park my car. <laughs> I just travel with you and go, do you know where we parked? That's how I do it. So anyway, so I mean, so the fun thing about this is once you get the courage 
huge up, and you realize it's just a staple gun and a few other tools we're going to tell you about. But, I mean, now the sky is the limit. You can not only reupholster chairs that maybe are hand-me-downs that you have just sitting in the garage, or there's one that's in the dining room and you had a slip cover over it. And slip covers are cool and all, but maybe you want to do something more. Yeah, or you may decide, you know, this ch- these chairs never were as comfortable as they could uh-huh. be. I'm going to amend it and get new, more dense foam. And some maybe batting in there batting. to kind of fluff it up. Yes. Gonna, uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna never leaving this dining room experience. Because <laughs> have you noticed how some sometimes chairs feel so, when I mean, they're beautiful, but then when you sit on them, they feel so flat that you're right on the wood. Yeah. Almost like you're in a ballpark. Cru- right? Cruel chairs. On a very uncomfortable it. theater. Terrible. Very cruel. Yeah. It's like they want you to leave. And they, we don't they want, want you that. to get through the first course and get out. And when you're out and about throughout the week or on the weekends, I mean, now this is an opportunity for you to be a rescuer. Think of the good you're going to do. You're going to repurpose and relove a chair because the flea market opportunities. You might find that beautiful frame of a chair and the perfect, you know, feet on the chair. It right. looks so cool, but then you go, oh, my gosh, but the, the fabric is moldy or nicky, and what am I going to do, yeah, right? It, yeah, it, that's a great point because, it, it, you know, the sky's the limit. You can see something that you normally would be repulsed by because of the fabric and mm-hmm. know because you've done this before. I can just recover it. It's going to be amazing. What? It's only five bucks? Mm-hmm. Give me seven of them. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one of those deals. So now we know that um, we're going to have all these different possibilities open to us, that we're going to have newfound confidence. Now let's just kind of figure out what what are different steps involved and what are the tools involved, right? And so the thing is, with zero experience, you're going to do a first-class upholstery job. So know that. And I I think that we would want to have our folks, you know, take a shot first at a cushion, a seat cushion. Oh, that's a good idea. Rather than get into the back of the chair, that gets a little more complicated. Start with the cushion. Let's start with the cushion just so you get your feet wet, and we'll take you through yeah, that process. Yeah, because, um, you know, basically if the chair is fairly new to start with, you can simply cover the existing fabric with right. the new material, right? right? And it's going to make sense you're going to want to tear off the old fabric and replace the foam padding and so forth. But uh, we gotta, we're going to get into this in a minute about the foam. The foam itself only has a lifespan of five to ten years. Yeah. How many times have you changed the foam in your chair? I think we kind of forget I think they do, and that's when they get uncomfortable and compressed, and that's when you start to loathe them. And know? it's all about the batting, too. That batting you could buy it for about a bag of about 36 bucks or so, and you right. can just use that. It's, it's that white kind of glycerin-looking stuff that goes beneath the, the foam, right? And yeah. that really lifts it that up. That really lifts it up and gives it, it that ma- perky like feel. cloud. You're sitting on heaven. <laughs> Heaven in a cloud. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, we're going to help you figure out how to reupholster that chair you've always been wanting just to give it that new look or maybe an entire set. The sky is the limit. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards, where we improve your home and improve your life. I'm going to sit right down. And write myself a letter. <laughs> we feel so swanky with that music kind of setting the tune. I'll take two Manhattans right now, please. <laughs> Have a little lady sit in the corner booth for me. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Cindy Dole, Eric Stromer. We're home wizards where we love to improve your home and improve your life. Maybe make you laugh and smile a little bit. And, yeah, we're going to sit right down because we're talking about uh, reupholstering chairs. Because, darn it, we can do this. Yeah, do you don't have to be, you know, restricted by fear. There's there's no question. It seems complicated when you look at a chair at first, but really all it is is a piece of plywood with some fabric on top attached to your chair frame. And I love how you called it origami. It really is when you yeah. think of the fabric folding over like you're making a sandwich. That's it. You're just wrapping up a sandwich. So, who hasn't so made a sandwich? I've made one actually this morning. Wrapped, I made and who one. hasn't wrapped it up in Bacon the bag? Bacon and, and eggs. You made, is that what you had? That was great. Yeah. So, so basically, what tools are we recommending? A okay, so, so let, let's... let's break it down okay you have a chair it's sitting there in your living room if you flip the chair over chances are screws are attaching the chair base to the frame it'll be probably a phillips head screwdriver so if you have a screwdriver that you can put in reverse mode and then screw the chair you pull off the cushion screwdriver check right so Staple you, gun, yeah. So then you, yeah. So do you want to go through the the materials or how to do it? The, first? T- the tools. Okay, great. Staple gun, screwdriver. Uh, some great shears. If you've got good cutting oh, shears, they'll yes. cut fabric effectively. Sharpie. And then a utility knife. And what about a, a nice what about uh, spray adhesive? Some of these different um, like sticky tacky, the tacky glue, yeah, th- that are good for fabric There's and wood. No question. Yeah. yeah, and and then that's it for the foam. Well, okay, now materials. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. materials. You yeah, want to yeah. have the batting, which sure, is sure. that nice, nice heaven on a, on yeah, a chair that cloudy. you were talking about. Although it looks like, I mean, I wonder if you could get it like a. Uh, 
a little prick in your finger from it. Is there like almost like a fiberglass in there? It, it looks that way, but no. No, okay. No, it's not going to make make you feel that way. Uh, so you're going to get your fabric, your batting. You want to have your foam. And then you can have two different kinds of foam. A lot of times folks will use the more dense stuff in the mm-hmm. center. Mm-hmm. Then they'll layer that with the batting and then another piece of foam where the plywood meets the, the cushion. So it's like a, a two-stage thing, actually three different types of, of foam. So we're making a cake, if you can imagine. I guess the base would be Base would be plywood. Yeah, then you'd have the foam. And then, okay. And then, then you'd have batting. And right? then and then more foam. And then more foam if you want. And then your material. And then the seat. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And and basically, how, how thick of the foam do you think we should use, though? Well, I mean, if you're so going Princess in the Pea, you're going to want about you know, 16 inches. But That's normally, me. yeah, <laughs> normally it's about four inches. The Princess foam's about four inches. Yeah. yeah. If it's a, if it's any higher, then it starts to affect the ch- traditional seat well, height. Well, but the thing is, at dinner time, you're going to know who's boss. <laughs> There's no so question. So I'm really down. comfortable, and I'm tall in the chair. And I'm taking past the broccoli. I'm giving I can all the see orders. everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's very funny. So basically, what you do then is you 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 flip your chair over. You mm-hmm. detach the the plywood sub base, which is your chair seat, from the frame. Put it down on a table, a work surface. Okay, mm-hmm. you're not going to want to put it on a nice surface if you if you have a beautiful table put a sheet or something over it to protect it. So you lay it down, cushion side down. With the legs up. Yeah, but but we've we've detached the chair from the leg. The the, seat okay, oh yeah, right. So it's just frame. completely just a, just a piece of it's just a, a round or a square surface. Whatever shape it is, yeah. Okay. So you put it cushion side down. It's uh-huh. sitting there almost like a pizza box, right? You you see that there'll be staples or upholstery tacks on the bottom. It depends on who who did it and how it was done. If it's upholstery tacks, you can use a pair of pliers. If it's staples, you can just use a butter knife or a screwdriver, anything to pry the staples out. Take them all out. Get them out of the fabric. You'll you'll unleash this thing. It'll kind of spring open. Mm-hmm. At that point, take all the fabric off the cushion and then lay that out on top of your new fabric. So your new fabric is face down. You lay the old fabric face down on top of that. Use your Sharpie and start, if you can, use a corner so you're not wasting the fabric. You don't want to just cut it out of the center of the fabric. Right? Mm-hmm. But also you have to take into consideration your pattern. The if pattern. You have, if you have patterns that are specific where something has to be lined up in the center, you're going to have to do some work to figure out exactly where that lays out. And it's good probably to have about half an inch or an inch to kind of have an overlap, don't yeah. you think? Yeah, I mean, you, you may want to have a little extra than your original pattern just so you can make sure that you're covered. You know, maybe the old fabric stretched a little more than the new fabric does. So give yourself about a half inch or an inch of play. So is it, in terms of the pattern, how we want to make sure that the pattern, let's say that we have a flare de lis you know what yeah. I mean? And we want to have them all going up, right? right? Exactly. So if, if that chair is shaped, Sort of, so it's tapered. Like the back is maybe a little less wide than the front of it is That's where, where your knees tricky. are. That's uh-huh. where it gets tricky. Uh-huh. So you have to orient it. And make sure you know what you're doing there. Uh-huh. Okay. So you get your Florida Lee. It sits right in the center. The diamond, you know, crest is pointing inward. So you want to make sure that you orient it that way and cut your fabric to that idea. So then you 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 put the piece down on top of that. You do your sharpie around it. Give yourself maybe a half inch or an inch outside of that dimension. Cut it a little wide, mm-hmm. all the way around, and then you start to build your foam and your and your padding over again. So that that one first seat becomes your model, if you will. That's right. To copy for the rest of your set. Yeah. yeah. And if it's a rounded seat versus a square seat, I mean, I know that there can be a challenge with kind of folds and creases if it's a round sure. cushion. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Whereas it, when it's a square, it almost becomes becomes more like you are truly, you know, wrapping a gift box. Or- yeah, and, and when you do round or when you do any any fabric stretching, it's the same as tuning a drum. So what you'll do is you'll take one side and fasten it, then you'll go directly the opposite side, fasten that. Then you go to the 12 o'clock position, fasten that, and then the, the 6 o'clock position, and then you keep always opposing the opposite side of your surface that you're covering. Right, you mm-hmm. never want to go clockwise because you'll never get an even stretch uh-huh. that way. So you want the always, tension, basically. It's the tension across, 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 across. All Got it. So you just basically work that whole pattern and scheme, and you're you're at this point either gonna. So you want to build up your your fat, your cushions again, right? Mm-hmm, so you get mm-hmm. your new foam, and that is using the template of your old foam to cut the same exact size. The batting, the same thing. Lay the batting out on the new batting and cut that as well, and then make your cake of cushioning that way, starting with the plywood at the bottom. Then, then the piece of foam, then the batting, then the little nice piece of uh, the other foam if you uh-huh, want it, uh-huh. and then layer it up, 
and then you put your fabric over that and then flip it back over again and staple it or or use your upholstery tacks. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And then the staples, what, about five sixteenth inch staples as a yes. matter? Yeah, yeah you, good... you, you want to make sure that they're not too long that they won't yeah. bury all the way into right. the plywood, but not too short that they won't hold the fabric in place. So that's that's the defi- the size you want. The five sixteenth, I think, is the one that works the best. You know, that this, this whole idea of doing your own chairs has become so popular that there are... Um, uh, workshops and uh, you know day camps, if you will, on just this. Yeah. And then after you do a chair, you get to the next level of okay. Now I'm going to do like a bench. Sure. And now I'm going to do like a headboard. I've and- done a bunch of headboards in my life, and the headboards are actually really easy. All it is is a piece of plywood, the width of the bed, and however the shape that you want. If you want it to crest on the top, you scribe that out with a jigsaw using a sharpie to create your pattern and your sh- your shape or size, mm-hmm. or a big rectangle, whatever you want. And then it's the same exact thing. You just lay that plywood down. You put your batting, and then you put your foam, and then it's another the same, layer of It's batting. the same, same philosophy. Yeah. So here's a question. Let's say that we're focusing on the chairs, and we found we went to a garage sale, and we found these beautiful uh, chairs that are antiqued. The wood is, is a really neat, rich look and design. It needs a little bit of TLC, but the fabric for sure needs to be replaced. Yeah. At what point do you think do we work on the wood? I mean, we take the fabric off. We work on the wood and, and stain that and get that looking better first. You mean for your frame of your chair? Yes. Yeah, you would want to have the, all the stuff done with the sanding and of the painting the, the legs and the and legs. All, yeah. all that's done with the cushion off. Mm-hmm. And then when it's completely dry and set up, then you put your cushion back and reattach it. So if you're so so, let me just go over this one more time. So if the cushion is facing upward, like you're normally sitting, first it's the plywood, then it's the foam, then it's the batting, then it's the fabric. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. that's where that's the order of things. So anyway, if you're going to then refinish the chair, obviously, with the with all the cushions off and you've prepared all your, your batting and foam and all that stuff and fabric, then you're, you're going to want to take the frames of the chairs out to the garage and you can do your sanding there. You know, you can do your painting, however you want to mm-hmm. approach these chairs. And I think that uh, when you do something like this, it not only gives you a sense of accomplishment um, and uh, you've you've saved some money, but now it's like, you know what, now I'm going to take it to the next level because it's almost become a boot camp experience. You know, you've done this cool thing and now you feel like, wow, well, look at all the other things that I can do. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, and that's when you can start getting into more regular shape backing of chairs or you know, larger areas, to your point, like benches yeah. Yeah. or headboards yeah. or anything like that. And in terms of staple guns, um, is there a certain staple gun that you recommend, or, or better the yet? The Arrow. I, I've been using the Arrow yeah. forever and ever. Is there one that's bad? Is there a cheap, bad one that's going to hurt us somehow? Yes, I would say the ones that, you want the ones that are a little more beefy and aggressive. Don't go with a smaller one. Get the larger, Don't get the one at the dollar, the dollar store. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> right? You definitely, and, and what hap- the way they work is some of them, will depress by you squeezing them together, almost like pliers, and then some will work while you depress the butt of your hand down. So make sure you're familiar with that because sometimes people will sort of accidentally do it the wrong way, and that's when you can misfire the things. But pretty much they're, they're very simple to use. They require a little bit of force downward to get that drive that staple into the plywood. So you can use your body to kind of lean down onto the staple. As but you like going. Arrow. Arrow is one of yeah, them. Yeah, that's a great brand. I've been using those for years okay. and years. Yeah. Well, if you don't have a staple gun, get that and, and let's they also all make try them. It. They also make them with compressors or electric versions of them to make it a little easier to fire. Okay. So take a look if you want more budget on it. When we come back, we're going to talk about some of the top remodels that you should consider for this year. And who knew? It may just be replacing the front door. Eric Stormer. Yeah, that's right. Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards, where we improve your home and improve your life.